This is aimed at white people like myself who get uncomfortable and upset and feel like they're being attacked when their privilege is pointed out. And a lot of that is a misunderstanding and a lot of that is learned behavior and a lot of that is we were taught that racists are bad and if you call me racist that means you think I'm a bad person and it's so much more complicated than that and it's something that I feel like I didn't really even learn until maybe the past 10 years, probably less than 10 years. I grew up in a very privileged family. I thought that racism ended in the 60s. That's what I was told, so that's what I believed. I used to think, why are some people afraid of the police? They must, maybe if they just didn't commit crimes, they'd have nothing to be afraid of because I have, I'm not afraid of the police not understanding what was going on. And I think some people still feel that way. There's a lot of people that will argue back with these countless stories of black men and women, sometimes children, being killed by the police and there's always a response of well what were they doing and that's the same type of victim blaming that rape the victim's face well what were you wearing that you can't help themselves it was your fault for wearing skimpy dress it's never the victim's fault and if there is a time when it is the victim's fault that's the exception not the rule I, I mean, obviously my voice is not the one that matters right now, but I also think it's important as a white person to own up to the way I've acted in the past and strive to do better. And education is so important in understanding the issues, understanding why certain things you say are ignorant and hurtful. And I think we just need to get better at accepting that we've done harmful things, own up to it, and strive to do better because most people I know don't want to live in a racist society, but by denying is that it exists, it's hurtful to everyone. You can't deny other people's experiences. And for you to say that it's not a thing, you never had to live that life. So how dare you say that they're making it up or they're making it worse than it is or they're playing the victim? You've never even come close to experiencing the same things that they deal with. So. I've heard of a lot of people using the excuse of, well, what about this group? What about that group? I get that a lot when talking about veganism. As if a person doesn't have the capacity to care about more than one thing at once is insulting. Everything is connected. So I just, I think that's a very defensive argument of, well, you don't care about this, so how can you care about one thing and not the other? You can care about both. It's possible. I know in my family specifically, I've heard family members use the all lives matter argument, which is extremely dismissive. I think there's a lot of people get upset when it's pointed out that we live in a racist society because they don't want to be associated with that. And it doesn't mean you're a bad person, that just means that's the world you know and that's what you grew up in, but we have the ability to learn from that and be better. And I don't see why anyone should not want that. Don't you want things to be better? It's okay 
to realize that you were wrong and adopt a new viewpoint. No one's going to judge you for it. It's only going to be a good thing. So why not open your mind and listen to what people have to say that have been experiencing this their whole lives? There's really no excuse to dismiss it unless you think that unless you know that you're benefiting from their oppression and you don't want that status quo to change that's a problem and that is racist so okay so going back to people that use the all lives matter argument that is a form of gaslighting it's telling people that how dare they care about a specific issue when there are other issues. Like I said before, you can care about more than one thing at once. Just because you care about one thing doesn't mean that you automatically hate everything else. So it's like the whole reason that this movement exists is because all lives don't matter. We've seen time and time again that black lives don't matter to the police, the government, all sorts of institutions. The black community is one of the highest affected rates of people affected by COVID. It's, it's all connects. So the reason that Black Lives Matter exists is because we're shown that they don't matter until we're shown by the government that they do matter. We're gonna fight for them to matter just as much as everyone else. I think you know no one's saying that they, they matter the most because it's been clearly shown that they don't in this country. No one thinks they're better. We They just want to be equal. They just want to be able to go for a run, drive in their car, play in the park, sleep in their beds without worrying that the police are going to kill them. Because I don't know about you, but I've never had that fear and no one in my family has ever had that fear. And I don't think millions of people are making it up that this is their daily life. So I don't, I think there's, why not believe them and want to help? Why is that something that you're fighting so hard? Um, <clears throat> so I've seen a lot of comparisons, examples of um, the All Lives Matter argument and the most effective one that I can think of is, let's say you're at your father's funeral. It's specifically about your father. It's because that funeral is happening doesn't mean that nobody else's death matters. But it's like if you were at the funeral and somebody came in and shouted in your face, it's not always about you. Other people die too. That's not the issue. Something that I kind of thought of as a comparison that maybe some people might relate to is if you've ever had a family member mistreated in the hospital. My grandma died in 2013. She went downhill fast and part of what sparked that was she fell and hit her head in the hospital. And I remember my family being very upset, obviously wanting to hold accountability for the hospital and whoever was on duty supposed to be watching her. So just think about that. Think about a family member you love being the victim of malpractice. And then imagine that that malpractice was filmed and everyone could see how blatantly wrong it is, yet nobody gets, maybe they get reprimanded, they don't, there's no, there's no consequence. This is what the 
black community is seeing day in and day out, but they're seeing people that they love and people that look like them being murdered on camera all the time. So for people that have never lived that experience, to tell them to stay calm and be peaceful and to grieve in a way that you think is appropriate and have people say, why is it always about black people? Are you kidding me? Can you imagine seeing somebody you love die on camera and millions of people watch it and everyone's just like, that's just the way it is. I mean, I don't know. Nothing we can do. You would be inconsolable. So just try to remember everything that happens does not happen because they brought it upon themselves. It happens because we built the system that causes this to be a repeating issue day in and day out. And regardless if your family, when your family came here, you weren't a part of the beginning of this country that was built on slavery. You're a part of this country now, and if you don't agree with it, if you don't agree with slavery, which no one should, obviously, but you can't, you can't just dismiss your responsibility just because your ancestors weren't personally responsible doesn't mean that you're off the hook and you just don't have to worry about it. You should want to make this country a better place. You should care about other human lives. And if you don't, then you really have to ask yourself why you get so defensive. Why, why does it bother you so much to hear the words Black Lives Matter? Is it because you don't really believe that? That's something that you have to sit with. And when people say that they don't see color, which is something that I used to think was an appropriate argument, again, it totally dismisses that person's existence. It dismisses their struggles. It denies it denies their story, it denies their pain, and that's called gaslighting. And I just want to be clear, it's very, it's very easy to feel like you're under attack. But just compare these feelings of being called out to watching people you love every day get killed by people that are supposed to serve and protect and more times than not they do not receive any punishment unless there's public outcry so for all the times that it's not caught on camera they get away with it and the argument that it's a few a few bad apples we all know that people in power do bad things and they will do everything they can to stay in power and to protect the people in their group so all of the police that don't speak up, that don't turn in other officers for doing blatantly heinous illegal crimes, they are complicit and they are just as guilty. And few bad apples or not, if you're not one of the bad ones, you should be just as angry and wanting to reform the system. Because what do you have to lose if, if you're on the good side? I mean, it can only get better, right? So why wouldn't you fight for that? And if you don't, you have to really think about what you really feel. I can't remember that the woman's name that did all the um, 
anti-racist exercises in the 60s. She did the blue eyes, brown eyes experiment. I'll find it and link it. But I just saw a clip of her speaking to an audience and I don't know when it was filmed, but she was pointing out, it was a room full of white people and she said, if any of you would wake up tomorrow and want to trade places with a black person, would you? Raise your hand. Nobody, not one person raised their hand. And she said, that's enough to show me that you know that they're treated differently and that they have it worse. So there's no excuse for saying that you don't, you don't know or you don't think they have it that bad. Would you trade places with them? I don't think you would. And that's because you know that, you know. So I think the strong and the brave thing to do is if you're, if you're a religious person and you go to church, do you really think Jesus would see what's happening and be like, mm, I don't want to focus on this because all lives matter. And these people are clearly suffering, but I don't want to single them out and make them special, so I'm not going to do anything. No, he would not do that. So you have to ask yourself, if you, if you pay attention at all in church, you should be on the side of the people that are being oppressed and killed. There's just no defense otherwise. That's my opinion. I just want anyone that might be watching this, I know that I don't have a very big audience at all, but if one person can maybe see, learn something, really do some thinking about why they get so upset at the fact that racism is alive and well, and why they're so against actively fighting against it, you've got some self-reflection to do. And I know another Another argument is people saying, I had it rough growing up, I was poor, blah blah blah. And I think white privilege can be a very touchy subject because some people that don't understand things it means the word privilege means that you are hoity-toity and you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth. And it's important for you to understand that that's not what that means. It means any hardship that you have faced in your life was not made harder because of the color of your skin. That is all it means. I don't know if any of this is usable. I just think it's so important to sit with the shame that we should feel for being complicit and ignorant for so long and really look deep within ourselves and work through why we get so upset when these realities are pointed out. You don't have to have a Nazi sign in your window to have bias and to say and think racist things. We are all born into this system and we have been taught what we have been taught. It's not your fault, but it is your fault to know what's going on and choose to pretend that it's not because it makes you uncomfortable because the black community is literally being murdered and what I, we are so lucky that the worst that could happen to us is being ashamed and uncomfortable. I think we owe it to them to sit with that discomfort and that shame and start showing up and start speaking out against what is wrong. Because if you 
are interested in history at all, you should understand that all the big changes that have happened in this country were a direct result of people protesting and fighting for what was right. And this time is no different. And just because something is the law doesn't mean that it's morally right. You can look at Nazi Germany for that example. Please just be open-minded. Please there's a great documentary on Netflix called The 13th. It talks a lot about the criminal justice system starting since slavery and Jim Crow and why, why we have the problem that we have with so many black men in jail and so many cases of police brutality against black men. It is extremely eye-opening and educational and I challenge you to watch it and not learn something. Hopefully you're a little more educated and can at least understand. No one's asking you to even agree. Just understand. Just know the history. Because that will help you realize how deep this goes. And how racism is more than just name calling and stuff like that. This is... people are dying. People are afraid. People are grieving, hurting, and it's up to us to help fix it, regardless if our ancestors were involved or not. We live here now, and we need to help fix it today. So, I encourage you to educate yourself. I'll link some resources of Instagram accounts that I found helpful in teaching me more about even daily covert acts of racism by white people that is most of the time not intentional. So much is not intentional that doesn't change how it impacts. So we need to work harder on making sure our intentions match the impact. So that's all I guess. Let's do better.